Okay, there's a break in the... well, we haven't gotten storms yet, but it has been raining really hard off and on today. So there's a slight break in that, so maybe the electricity will stay on. Um, today is the kiddos' last day of school before summer break, so in the future these will probably have lots of YouTube noise in the background. Just, just a warning. And yes, I did get rained on. I've tried to smooth my hair down, but I know it gets frizzy when it's humid and wet. And oops, I forgot to put on. I save all the thread when I um, gather skirts. I usually use the ruffler foot, but still because where the ruffler foot stitches is not where I'm stitching, I pull the thread out. So even though I'm not ruffling the old-fashioned way where you sew a basting stitch and pull it up, I do that sometimes. I've done that with something I'm going to show you because it's so thin, it doesn't cooperate with the ruffler. Anyway, so I end up with all this thread and I just put it here and then it gets to be a mess. I don't know if it was even visible in the video, but it was annoying me. So, I have been sewing. I have been nominally working on things that I'm sewing for people as thanks for things they have sent to me and that pile is over there and I'm also making a few things that I might offer for sale here and there but one of the things that I am doing is all the cloth that Natalia sent me last month so I think I told you that some of the things that she sent were clothes, but either they were rips or holes or someone had already cut out part of them to use for some other project. So I'm just, I'm taking a, one of those garments and I'm making as many things as I can out of that until the cloth's gone. I did that, the first thing I did it with was a shirt that had the sleeves taken off, so it's just the bodice. So I didn't have as much cloth as if the sleeves had still been there. But it had also had the label taken out, so I'm not sure exactly what it, the fiber content is, but I think it's a cotton silk blend. It has a really interesting feeling and texture, and it was probably made in India too. I made one of those to send as thank you, I made one to put off as sale or trade, and then I made some for my own dolls, including for her. You see this is really interesting cloth. It has a lot of texture and it's mostly shades of brown which is really not my thing but then there's this sort of mauvey, lilac-y, purpley, pinky color shot through it too as well as some darker pinks. So obviously I have put this dress on the silk stone, although I'm still not allowing myself to play with her yet because I'm still working on sales and organizing and I did ship out a lot of the sales stuff today, thank you. And I am really thinking of things to put on the next round for the sales list because I've pretty much admitted that Monster High just isn't my thing. It's you know I like the pastel skin tones because I paint dolls that way, but I like the pastel skin tone dolls to be otherwise relatively realistic. Yes, I get pastel hair too. But Monster High, the way they're stylized, I'm not a fan of big heads generally. There are always exceptions, but I don't like the way their necks are set up. I don't like the proportions of their limbs. I don't like how tiny skinny they are. It's not a problem with sewing for them, it's just aesthetically long, thin, skinny does not appeal to me. I said in general, there will be exceptions, but Monster High as a group, just, I'm finally admitting that they're not for me. I will hang on to a few like kitties and spider because I like kitties and spiders anyway, but I'm still thinking about what else I want to let go in the next. I'm looking over there because all my monster highs are over there. And that's kind of another thing with my dolls. The dolls I really like are here. And then the middle section, since this is, um, the top of this is shorter, then some shorter dolls go in there and dolls are like, and then the last section, which is the same size as this section, 
there are dolls that are like, but they're also the farther over you get, the more I'm yeah about my dolls and all my monster highs are like shoved in that corner over there. So I'd like to get more room. I'd like to well you can't declutter doll shelves because dolls are by default clutter. But just thinking about more dolls to let go. I actually put a bunch of um doll surprise dolls for John in a package I mailed today. Shh, don't tell you don't tell yourself, John. So it's his birthday's coming up. So that so anyway, I got four dresses out of this. Like I said, one Barbie size, one MSD size, two SD sized. This is for my dolls. MSD size is going off with a thank you gift. One of SD size is going in this, it's already in the sale trade box. And then the other SD size, I'm actually not done with this outfit, but I started working on this for Stella, my Hujo Ayo. And also keeping in mind the fact that I just did the lace video, which more of you have watched it than I thought. Thanks. Um, so I started, I used trim. And I actually have used one, two, three, four different trim on this, and it looks like there's barely any on it. So I need, I st I'm still working on upping my trim and lace game. But the thing about this is this purple mauve color, it's not quite, I'm, it's not quite mauve. It's, it's a little too pink to be mauve. But it's somewhere in the purple to pink end of the spectrum. Anyway, that's a color I like. I mean, I would dye my hair that color if I didn't have to mix it up every time and that would get inconsistent. And I will touch this up eventually soon. I don't know if you've seen the pictures um, from Vanity Fair of the new Star Wars characters and the, I remembered her name two minutes ago, the character played by Laura Dern has short curly mauve purple pink hair and I sure hope she doesn't turn out to be an unpleasant character because that's the hair I want. Anyway, so I have stuff in that color. I had trims in that color. I had two different trims in that color that worked well with that cloth but one of the trims also had bright green in it, which just alone didn't work with the cloth, but then I pulled out bright green in another part. And I'm not done with this outfit because I have a bright green satin that I'm going to make an underskirt or maybe bloomers to go with it. And I also, I'm either gonna make her a necklace with bright green beads, or I'm going to make her a sort of capelet with this bright green fake fur I have, because bright green is another color I like, even though I don't wear it much. Anyway, here we are. You see my layers of trim on the hem. I'm sure there's lots of cat hair you can see too. And then I did the green satin ribbon across. And the stuff on the bodice is just on the front. It doesn't go all the way around. And everything else she's wearing right now is stuff I already had. Oh, I also pulled green out I have these little frog barrettes that I've had forever. So I put one of those in her hair and made this for her winter outfit last winter. And like I said, there will be green down here and green up here. So I'm, that's one thing I do with colors. I like putting pops of contrast color, but pops, plural. I don't like having just one burst of a different color. I like to have it in at least three places and here I only have two so and if I definitely want to give her the underskirt partly to hide the fact that I accidentally um, made the bodice too long in the back so the back of the skirts longer than the front of the skirt and not in a high low did it on purpose kind of way so then all then but then if I put that green down there then all the green will be there so I need to put green up there higher and like the green frog is not quite as obvious. So anyway that's kind of how I think because I know people seem impressed by the way I can mix up doll clothes and accessories. Look, I just keep adding stuff. I keep adding more and more and more stuff and try to balance the color throughout. That's my general theory of course. I will always vary. And this is Hujo Ayo. I got a question about her. I'm, 
don't know if I'm going to do a proper review of her, but my impressions of Hujo Ayo. Okay, first thing, this is like with a couple centimeters ground off of her bust. She has a very large bust and a very tiny head. She has like a 7-8 head, if that big. She is pretty. She does have the proper ball jointed doll face aesthetic. And this one has a face up by Retrograde Works. She's in lovely purples. And she does have green eyes in too, but they're too big for her little tiny head, so they don't really catch the light well because they sit far back inside her eye wells. Uh, the Hujo Ayo body. She is ABS, but she is heavy. She's not thin ABS. She's really thick ABS, so this is a heavy doll. But the way her joints are to help with posing, there's actually rubber caps on everything. So she will hold a pose well if you can get her into the pose. Like, her arm sure will hold there. It'll hold there, but just a little bit away from the body. I don't know if that would be solved with restringing her because she doesn't have the joint, the um, the, the rubber joint stuff is inside, you can see it pulled out a little bit. And she has double hinged elbows, or double jointed elbows, I'm not sure what the, is not hinged because she's strung. And there are a few degrees of posability. It's like this doll, if you can get her into a pose, she will hold it. And she stands. She stands partly. Part of the reason she stands really well is because she has really big feet too. I have pretty much exclusively, almost exclusively, put her in male BJD shoes. These are male. These were sent by Cheshire Tippy. Thank you very much. The uh, vinyl is deteriorating, so these are nice fix-up projects. I touched up some scuffs, actually gouges, and the strap was missing, and I happened to have some leather vinyl strap that's the right size, so I just went ahead and threaded that back up. So she has nice big male feet. And her hands I think are big, but they're very, very pretty, very graceful. She just can't do much with them. I mean, maybe, maybe what's showing through here is my lack of experience with ball jointed dolls, because I'm used to Barbies and action figures where they will hold a pose until their joints wear out, in which case they get floppy. So, I'm not sure if I'm the best person to review this doll because I don't have a lot of experience with other ball jointed dolls to compare her to. It's only with her that I finally get ball jointed dolls. In the past, I, I had a Volk Super Dolphy Nono in about 2005, and then by 2000, maybe I had her in 2004, because I think I had her a year, but I sold her on in 2006. And then later I had a Dragon Doll Zhao, and I liked her, but I just didn't click. And finally, I think it's just actually getting a proper face up, because I used to be stubborn and try to do their faces in just acrylic paint trying to be stylized the way I like to do stuff, and that just doesn't work for Baltimore dolls. So, now we have this Io who I cannot review. Sometimes her tiny little head annoys me, and I think that I will pass her on to a new home, but then I look at her again, and she stays. And as you can see, she stands like a rock, even in these kind of curved platform boots. So I don't know if I'm helpful in anyone trying to figure out with who Joe Ayo is for them or not. I mean, the body might look better with a bigger head. And like I said, she is ABS, but it's really it has it's not a shiny ABS. She's not like a 30 centimeter obitsu, old style obitsu body, not the new obitsu, it's the old obitsu. So she's not shiny. She looks like resin. She's heavy. She's just has these weird rubber caps and fiddly posing, but a different way than Baldwin adults are fiddly, than traditional resin Baldwin adults that don't have the rubber caps. All right, I'm going to stop talking about her now because I think I've said what I have to say. 
So hopefully next time I show her I will have the green underskirt and something green going on up here. And maybe some green bracelets. I don't know. And I do want to go outside and take pictures of her in the tree line behind the house. Just one, I'm not finished with her outfit, and two, it has been raining almost every day since I started working on her. So that was the first thing that I sewed everything that I could from the cloth I was starting with. And then I did take a small break because I, I have a Hujo Dana too and she's wearing a wig that I made and I thought I wanted to change her wig but I don't actually have any other wigs that are size, I think she's 5'6". She's an MST size doll with a tiny Hujo head. And um, so I wanted to mess with wigs, and I took the wig off of my Seer, my Monster High Goliope custom. And I wanted to find just, again, Monster High, I'm not sure I'm going to keep him around. So I thought, well, if I sell her on, I still want her to have a wig, since I cut all of her original hair off, but it's not rerooted, and the hair's not even taken out. So I went through my wig stash, which a lot of it is wigs that people have, again, thank you, very kindly sent me from trades or purchase bonuses or whatever. So anyway, I put this on her and I wanted to make an outfit of black and white to match. So that's this dress and I don't have shoes for her. I've given up on shoes for this doll. I know they're out there. I know they're, it's like the 22 inch Tonner size fits, I think, but I'm not sure. So anyway, again, I, Remember to use some lace again, but this is only about three inches worth. And this ribbon actually was in my doll stuff already, not in my lace case. So, and I repainted her following Momoko style because I figured out a long time ago, if you don't know how you want to repaint a doll, if you imitate Momoko style, it'll probably work. So here she is in the dress I made quickly, and this is this is also cloth that somebody sent me, thank you. This was actually, obviously they had had a skirt that they wanted to be shorter because the hem is still on this, so this dress sewed up really fast because I didn't even have to hem this. Even though, again, I use generally use this thing to hem, make my little tiny rolled hems. But it's even faster when it's already done. So that's her. May end up on a sales list, probably not until next month. And then I moved into the next cloth, which was a pair of um, pajama pants made of this really, I mean this is two layers, this really soft, lovely cotton. And the hems of the pants had a detail in it, which looks like drawn thread, but it's actually just an insert of heavy lace. And so the first dress I made is on its way to John. And then the next dress I made was with the other hem of the pants, and that is on Tiffany Taylor. So, she, this doll has such an odd posture. I guess I can... No, you can't really make forward. Anyway, Tiffany Taylor, who also stands like a champ, even though she is wearing big, clunky, MSD-sized heels. Which, it is very nice to know that this pair of Misty heels, at least, fit her. I've also put her in Kemper-sized. Kemper, vaguely MSD-sized shoes. There's also another note about the Hujo Ayo. Kemper sells some bigger Mary Jane-style shoes that they look a little clown-like on Ayo, but they fit her. And they're a little more feminine and cheaper than the stuff that you see for ball-jointed boy dolls. I also have a pair of shoes for a Huju Ayo that I got from Mimi Wu that they're just Converse style high tops, but they're pink. So even though they're technically big for boy feet, it is nice having options for Huju Ayo. Anyway, so I made this dress for Tiffany Taylor, and this was someone else thrifted and I got her in a doll trade, and whoever had originally owned this doll had obviously preferred the blonde side because the back is all cut even. And you flip, I'll show you when you flip it around for the brown side. It's not cooperating. 
I mean, I know I could brush it out and part it and find her bangs again, but this doll obviously spent decades being blonde. But the thing, other thing though, is that whoever liked the blonde side also wanted her to have bangs or fringe like on the brunette side. So she has these little short bits cut, which I could take the time to flatten out and make into proper bangs, but I am not, not feeling it for this doll. So I just, I hide the bangs. I've clipped them up in barrettes from what she was previously wearing. And this time I just hot glued a bunch of paper flowers onto a ribbon and made her a simple little flower crown. Again, because the color, because there's so much white on these shoes, even though the vinyl matches the dress very, fairly well, I wanted to get white somewhere else. So that's why I put the white in her hair. I also should probably give her a necklace, I think, to have white. And this is the skirt that she is wearing when I got her. It's from Mego Candy, another 18-inch doll of the 70s. So, so I sewed that, I sewed the dress for John, I sewed two things, three things, for thank yous. And I have on my desk in front of me parts for a Super Dolphy sized outfit that I probably will offer for sale if it turns out okay. And I am putting lace on it. I mean, I feel like just this tiny bit of red lace is I have so much more that I could use, but this is really all that matches unless I start doing that contrast thing, in which case I'll have to put lace all over it if it's going to contrast, like I said, because I like to have three spots of contrast. Because my brain gets into these rigid little niches. Um, oh, I forgot to grab the Ricas I received last week. I went ahead and dressed them up all pastel. I have not made clothes for them specifically yet. But since I have plenty of Blythe-sized stuff, you know, this sweater is from an Aoshima Girls Mission 6 scale figure that's more momoko size. So the, the sleeves are a little long, and it's maybe a little baggy. But I dressed them, and then I put them in my room box, which really is just walls with a window and carpet. There's not much to it. I don't have much furniture or anything, but I just took quick pictures of them. And it's very much the Lisa aesthetic. And I finally swapped this guy's head. I cannot remember what I named him. I'm sure it's a variation of the name John because every doll or doll head that John sends me that works its way into a body gets a name that's a variation on the name John. But he had been on an Ever After High guy body, which the neck was just a little bit too skinny for this Ken head. And John's told me that this neck diameter works better on a Live Jake body. So I took the head that was on Live Jake off and I put this head on and it is a great fit. I didn't even change the clothes. And now that means that my Ever After High guy body is available to... If I finally want to put my vintage Allen, who he's hiding back there. If I ever want to put his head on an articulated body instead of his stock straight body, I have that option open again with the materials I have. The wind is picking up. I did go thrifting today because again today is the kiddo's last day at school which means that summer is coming which means I'm not going thrifting unless I'm going out on my own sometime. I actually see the stuff floating through the air now. There's, I know there's always stuff floating through the air in the videos because I sew right here. So there's always, this room just has fluff in it from all the sewing and cutting and cloth ripping and stuff that I do. I apologize for all the fluff that I can see in the videos. That's just part of living with me. We have a very dusty house. <laughs> so I did go to the thrift store I went to two since this is my last huzzah before the summer. First one I went to had a lot of a lot of fashion dolls, but none of them seemed really unusual enough for me to get. Although I'm not sure yet if I regret leaving the Generation Girl Tori behind, because the part of me who said get her is because get her because John likes these dolls, 
And if I hadn't just mailed a package to John, I might have gotten her and sent her to John. But I left her behind because also there's a voice, voice in my head saying, unless the doll is really spectacular, you don't need fashion dolls. You have plenty to work on. Those, mostly those are bodies without heads in that box. Although they're a lot in the box with the heads, they need hair and or faces. So I have plenty of fashion dolls to work on. So I left that store without getting anything. I went to the one a little closer to home. And I didn't have to remind myself not to get fashion dolls in there because they didn't have any. But they did have my other weaknesses. <laughs> they had kitschy old souvenir doll who is still in her packing material. That paper that just fell down is probably older than I am. Which means that she actually, I'm going to be crude with her here, she actually is still wearing a hose. I don't think I've ever seen one of these dolls that had hose on before. And she has shoes. Let me see if I can get her out. I've never seen one with this packing. Oh, her legs are hollow and squishy. Yeah, the shoes are actually soft plastic pieces that... <laughs> They're actually right versus left. And they look like they would come off, but I usually don't. Don't usually undress my Dress Me dolls. Or not the Dress Me dolls. Dress Me dolls, yeah. The little weird celluloid plastic blow molded dolls, yeah. The souvenir dolls I generally leave as they are. I might apply some steam or gentle, careful ironing to this dress. As you can see, she's obviously was laying down for a long time. And the upper part of her dress is really, it's that kind of taffeta that it has one color this direction and one color that direction. So it's green and red together, so as the light shifts, I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna rotate it. And um, so the way the light hits it kind of changes how the color looks, which I, I have some cloth like that that I've never sewn. I eventually wanna make something with, because that's how I work. Anyway, her little arms are on wire. And actually when I picked, when I first picked her up, they were pulled out, so this arm was short, it was pulled over, so this arm was short and this arm was long. I've managed to fix it a little bit. And her tiny, tiny head is actually made like a pose doll. It's um, fiber molded into a form fused together and then painted. But her hair is probably wool. I have no idea where she represents other than generically Europe. If anybody can peg down this particular national costume, I would appreciate it. I haven't tried to research yet. I have tried to research the other doll I found and brought home. I said my, my weaknesses, you know, I like fashion dolls, and I like souvenir dolls, and I like dress me dolls slash vintage dolls that have that very particular strong body style, like this. This is the largest one I found. Most of the other ones I found have been much smaller. She was wearing this little... <laughs> yes, I sniff my dolls. I'm sorry. She was wearing this sort of little baby doll onesie romper thing that I actually took off of her and left her in, left in the store for somebody else. It didn't fit her. It had the sleeves rolled up. And... I thought it was that that smelled like baby formula, but I still keep getting a whiff that baby formula smell off of her. So I don't know if it's her or not. At least she doesn't smell like cigarettes. And, um, yeah. She has had a life. <laughs> you see the paint is wearing off of the top of her legs. I'm not sure if I leave that as it is, because when she's dressed it won't show up. There's a little bit of paint worn off of her fingers, so I could touch that color up. Or I could be stubborn and sand off every little bit of paint from her body to reveal the inner gray. 
which, which, which. I think I've shown you this Madame Alexander doll before. Granted, this doll was supposed to be silver, but it was really horribly painted silver. So I still ended up sanding off all of the horribly painted silver to reveal her swirly metallic silver underneath. So a gray doll of this type is not outside my um, experience. But for now, I'm just going to... There's still some adhesive from the price tag on her forehead, and she needs to be cleaned up. And there's a lot of old glue that has aged badly around her ears. And of course, this hair needs to be worked on. I'm not sure if I can do it or if I will send her to somebody who is good with hair. You know who you are. Because this is a wig, and you know me with this kind of doll, I am more likely to peel the wig off and give her some fantasy hair. This is a funny Lori wig. Because I kind of wanted the look of mohair for her, but I didn't want to pay for mohair. So, funny Lori wig to the rescue. So like I said, I do have a kind of a weakness for this kind of doll, which it's not a childhood memory because I don't even know if I ever saw a doll like this when I was a kid. And the back of her head, it appears to say E with a period and then chap. Although when I tried to research her, I was finding thing everything I found with a doll like her insisted it was MF chap. And a lot of times dolls like this, their original clothes were stapled on. And so they have holes all over them from the staples. She only has a few holes in her arm. Where it looks like there were things pinned through her arm, but I don't know. So a few scrapes on her back where her original clothes might have been sewn on. But anyway, a fun project doll to go with all my millions of other project dolls to get to after I do thank you sewing for everybody interspersed with sewing for my dolls and sewing for sales. So if I can keep up, I can keep making things and the part for my tablet so I can post on Instagram again has made it to the US but the China Post tracking stopped when it got to the US so I don't know how close we are to getting that. I am posting on Flickr and I hope to be back to Instagram soon and it is getting darker and windier outside so this is as good a time as any to stop the video. Have a good day! And thanks for watching. I was free to say thanks, but thanks for watching.